discuss about uh, glass glass staging classification and validation kit for uh, chronically threatening ischemia sir Slide. So, chronic Yeah. Under a global which includes the patient risk, which is a checking whether the patient for the image, seeing the risk and the risk of life expectancy of the damaging by using a CLM, which is Wi-Fi classification, which is recommended in severity. And the other one is the anatomic pattern of the disease. In this, uh, uh, moreover, there is generally lack of uh, understanding of the relationship between the pattern of disease and the hemodynamic improvement after the treatment, and also the anatomical durability and the clinical staging and the outcomes that continues to the plague of the fields. In this glass system, anatomic scheme for the threatening limb, which is proposed, and uh, it set up baseline of assumptions to avoid complexity and permits its red in future research and uh, most importantly the glass incorporates two novel in, in important concepts which includes target arterial pathway and estimated limb patency uh, estimated limb patency for one year and five years and uh, coming to the definition of target arterial pathway this was defined by the treating surgeon as an optimal arterial pathway to restore the inline pulse style flow to the ankle and foot. And the limb based patency was defined as a maintenance of inflow throughout the target arterial pathway from groin to the ankle. And uh, this target arterial pathway may incorporate either the least disease or the angiosum preferred pathway as chosen by the treating clinician. And this limb patency, uh, limb based patency also allows the more direct comparison of the anatomic outcomes across the revascularization status in the C CLD. Uh, this glass uh, includes a simplified approach to the inflow, that is iotoiliac disease, which includes the stenosis of the common or external iliac artery and the chronic total occlusion either of uh, one vessel of either maybe common or external iliac artery or and the stenosis of infrarenal iota or any of this combination which is taken as a stage one. And the, and the stage two includes the chronic total occlusion of the iota and the chronic total occlusion of the common and external iliac arteries both and there's a CPU, uh, in the patients who are having severe diffuse disease and a small caliber veins of less than uh, small caliber uh, vessels of less than 6 mm and the common and external iliac arteries are the, which are having the concomitant uh, aneurysm disease which uh, which uh, severe diffuse instant renosis in the iota iliac system is also taken as stage 2 and the, currently the peripheral artery anatomic classification schemes either describing the location and the severity of the individual uh, arterial lesions or the quantifying the overall burden of the morphology of the disease. And also the lesion or the segmented waste gearing systems are also useful to compare the endovascular uh, device performance in a uh, well-defined clinical situation. And this is the grading system which uh, graded from femoropopulatal disease and it was graded in the four stages and the zero stage is the no significant stenosis or the very mild disease. In stage one, if the patient is having a uh, total length of SFA occlusion of less than one, th one third, that is 10 centimeters, and it may uh, or it may be including the single focal uh, chronic total occlusion of less than five centimeters, or the patient is having a uh, popliteal with mild or no significant disease. This is taken as a stage one. And the stage two includes the total length of SFA, which may be between one third or two third of the disease, which is of 10 to 20 centimeters of the disease, or the patient may be having the chronic total occlusion of less than one third, that is 10 centimeters, but not with the flush ligation, flush occlusion. And the other is the popliteal artery stenosis in less than two centimeters, not involving the trifurcation. 
this is the stage two. And the stage three includes the patient who is having the disease greater than two third of the uh, SFA, that is greater than 20 centimeters of the length. And uh, it may include any flush like occlusion of less than 20 centimeters. Or the patient who are having the short populated stenosis of two to five centimeters, which is not involved in the trifurcation. And the stage four is the total length of the SFA occlusion, which is greater than 20 centimeters. And the popliteal disease also disease greater than five centimeters extending up to the trifurcation. And any popliteal uh, chronic total occlusion is taken as a stage four. Coming to the infrapopliteal grading of the glass classification, this is also classified into four stages. And the stage zero is which is having mild or no significant disease. And in stage one, there will be a focal stenosis in the tibial artery, which is having less than three centimeters. And in stage two, there is a stenosis involving less than uh, involving one third of the total vessel total vessel length, and may also include focal chronic total occlusion of less than three centimeters. And the patients in this patients, uh, that, that it, uh, TB trunk was not involved or the tibial origin is also not involved. In stage three, the disease may up to two third of the vessel of total length and chronic total uh, occlusion is up to one third of its length and may include the tibial origin, but not the TP trunk. And the stage four is that there is a diffuse stenosis of greater than two third of the uh, total vessel length and the uh, chronic total occlusion of greater than one third of the vessel length may include the, which may include the vessel origin also or any uh, CTO, which includes the ATA uh, TP trunk, if ATA is not target artery disease. And uh, this glass is also having a, a classification for intramural pedal disease. Also. In this P0, the target artery, you can see in the first picture, which is showing the target artery crosses the ankle joint into the foot with intact pedal arch. And in P1, there is a target artery crosses the ankle into the foot or Maybe severely diseased pedal arch may be noticed. In P2, there is no target artery crossing the ankle joint. Basing on this uh, combination of femoropopliteal and uh, infrapopliteal grades, they are taken the cla glass was classified into three stages. We can uh, see that uh, femoropopliteal grades from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, infrapopliteal also four stages. They are taken the all four stages, both femoropopliteal and infrapopliteal grading. Fourth stage was taken as a glass three classification. And glass two classification, they are taken the femoropopliteal grade three, uh, grade three and uh, infrapopliteal in some patients, we can take up to grade two as taken as a gray, uh, class two, class two, cla class two classification. In class one, there is a patient who are having occlusion of uh, one and second grade of femoropopliteal or one and second grade of infrapopliteal as taken as a stage one disease. These are a few uh, <clears throat> angiographic pictures which are showing the glass stage uh, glass stage one, which represents the angiogram. In this, we can get a target arterial pathway, which was outlined in the yellow, yellow line. And the left, uh, in left side, the angiogram, which is showing the arterial pathway, which includes the anterior and tibial artery. And the femoral artery, uh, uh, the femoropopliteal grading was, it is zero because it's having less disease. And the infrapopliteal grade was, it was grade two, which is having uh, greater than three centimeters of the occlusion. And the right panel, which shows the target artery particle includes the peroneal artery and the femoropopliteal grade was two and the infrapopliteal grade was zero. There is another uh, angiographic explanation for last two stage was the in the in the left uh, in the left side panel, we can see that uh, target arterial pathway includes the anterior tibial artery. And in this, which includes the femoropopliteal grade was grade one, which is having a SFA lesion of less than five centimeters. You can see here. And uh, infrapopliteal lesion, so it was grade two, which are having two focal stenosis at the ATA origin and uh, length was less than 10 centimeters. In the right panel, which includes the target artery, which includes the peroneal artery as a target artery. And the, the grade for femoropopliteal was grade zero. There is no significant stenosis. And the infrapopliteal was grade three. This is also one of the angiographic pictures, which is explained in the class stage three. In this left side panel, we can see the femoropopliteal artery. There was a grade four stenosis, which is the length of 10 to 20 centimeters. And the popliteal stenosis are also there, which is heavily calcified vessel, we can see. And the infrapopliteal, there is a grade two stenosis at the tibial trunk and the proximal uh, peroneal. <clears throat> and the right panel shows the uh, target artery pathway, which includes the anterior tibial artery, and which includes femoropopliteal grade four and IP as a grade three, which includes the core total occlusion of the target artery origin. 
and how to apply the glass classification in normal patients. We can patients with chronic limb threatening ischemia and the, the patient should be the candidate for revascularization. And we will obtain the high quality angiographic imaging, which including the ankle and foot also. Then we can uh, define the target artery pathway, which we have to going to improve the vessel. And uh, the grading of the femoropopletal segment and grading of intraopopletal segment and overall looking for the glass staging, which stage it is going to be done. And uh, it should be preferred vascular strategy by integrating the patient risk by plan, which is included by patient risk and uh, limb patencies and uh, anatomic grading. Coming to the validation of the glass classification, the, uh, val the main aim of the glass classification is to examine the relationship between the glass stage and the treatment outcomes after the infra intrarenal revascularization of the patient with chronic limb threatening ischemia. There are few studies which was done whether glass staging affects the limb salvage or uh, wound healing and overall survival. This is the one of the journal. This is a retrospective study which was done in the patients who are undergoing intrainal revascularization for the period of 2010 to 2018. And they include around 153 patients of 190 limbs of Fontaine classification of three and four which are analyzed for uh, only for major amputation and the overall survival. In that, they took 125 patients and 150 limbs, uh, 157 limbs of Fontaine classification 4, and in this, they analyzed only for uh, wound healing. The, they classified in both glass staging and Wi-Fi staging, and the number of patients which included with the uh, Wi-Fi staging was 1, 2, 3, or 14, 14 uh, patients. And stage two is 44 patients, and stage three is 65 patients, and stage four is 67 patients. And the number of patients in the in this uh, study, they took a glass stage one, glass stage two, glass stage three, or uh, stage one, which includes 23 patients, the stage two is 48 patients, and stage three is 119 patients. Among all these 190 limbs, the number of patients who under, underwent the bypass surgery, endovascular therapy, and hybrid, uh, hybrid therapy were underwent. In this one, in this 190 limbs, uh, 132 patients underwent bypass procedures and 39 patients underwent uh, endovascular procedures and uh, hybrid procedures underwent by 19, per 19 people. Coming to the conclusion of this study, it is a, a multivariant analysis showed that only Wi-Fi staging and inframalar disease were the risk factors for the major amputation and impaired wound healing. And uh, glass staging showing no relationship between the limb salvage and wound healing. And uh, this staging may be useful to decide the patients whether to underwent bypass surgery or endovascular surgery in predicting the prognosis of the thing. And the other journal was, uh, which was a single institute retrospective study, which was done in uh, 1060 patients who undergone uh, 1180 times first open revascularization procedures in the chronic limb threatening ischemia from 2005 to 2014. And the primary composite outcome of this study was how many patients are getting re-intervention and how many patients are landing up into the major amputations and how many patients are, patients are having re, uh, re-stenosis events. And the secondary outcome of this study was they include all cause of mortality and failure to the cross the lesion by the endovascular methods and comparison of the bypass and endovascular in, uh, interventions. In these procedures, in this uh, 1060 patients, in this 552, they underwent by open bypass procedures and 628 by endovascular intervention. And they, they uh, did the classification according to the angiographic evidence as a 1, 2, 3. And they did the uh, follow period of 1 year and 5 year. And these uh, patients who underwent intervention, the re intervention rate for the glass 1 staging was 33% in 1 year. And uh, 5 years, it is 45%. And the patients who underwent uh, revascularization for stage two or class two classification was uh, re intervention rate was 48%, and uh, after five years, it is 65%. And the glass stage three, the re intervention rates are more. Uh, for one year, it is 53%, for five years, it is around 63%. And the mortality rate also they are calculated in for both uh, one, two, and three stages. For first stage, it is 40%, and second stage is 45%, and third stage is 49%. And the failure of the endovascular, who uh, they all attempted a failure to cross the target lesion increased by, was 4.5% for stage one and 6.3 for the stage two stage and 13.3 uh, for uh, glass stage three. We can uh, see that as the glass staging progresses, there is a failure to cross the target lesion according to the stage of the glass. 
and the restonosis rates are also more for endovascular when compared to open. Open for stage one, there is 34%. For endovascular, it got 49%. In stage two, open procedure, the uh, restenosis rates was 52% and the endo was 69%. And stage three, the 61% for uh, open procedures and 83% for the five year restenosis. We can see that uh, as the stage progresses, the endovascular procedures, the failure rates are more. Coming to the conclusion of this study, and it could be useful in the patients who are undergoing first time lower extremity revascularization and the glass can be predict the reintervention rate and restenosis of the uh, vessel and the bypass results in the better long term outscope when compared to the endovascular for all the glass stages coming to the another general present this is also a retrospective single study single center study in this uh, all patients are underwent for uh, endovascular procedures only around 400 lesions in 257 patients, which was uh, carried between 2019 and to March 2018. In this uh, glass, three patients, group patients uh, with uh, anatomic limb severity and uh, procedure complications were observed frequently with the glass three when compared to, there was uh, no significant difference between the glass one and glass two when the endovascular procedure comes into the treatment of, treatment option. In glass three, there is a complete Procedural complications was observed most frequently and the technical success rate was also very less when compared with other groups. And these patients, you can see the glass one, there is a 183 lesions for 108 patients. Glass two is 95 patients, 59, uh, 95 lesions for 59 patients. And glass three was 90 patients for 126 patients. And the patency, uh, the peripheral vascular intervention patencies of stage one, which includes a technical failure of 10% uh, in stage one, and the limb, uh, limb, uh, limb based patency was greater than 70% for stage one. And uh, stage two, there is a technical failure of less than 20%. And the one year limb patency, maybe it may be 50 to 70%. And for stage three, the technical failure was more, which is greater than 20%. And the limb uh, based patency was also less than 50%. Coming to the uh, take home message from this glass classification. It may help in anticipating the technical uh, difficulty for intervention, which may be either open procedure or endovascular procedure. And it may help to predict the re and re-intervention rates, uh, which was done by prior uh, angiographic evidence. And it can also be useful for decoding between the, deciding between the bypass surgery is better or endovascular therapy is better for prediction. But uh, these all, uh, uh, confirmation, the validation of the glass classification was not uh, completed because there are less number of studies. And for further validation of the glass classification, it requires more number of studies, low, uh, large number of studies, which include large number of cohorts. And, uh, and, it, uh, and glass classification is also not a good predictor for the mortality because it is it is not a single it is a single phased uh, classification. It is not including all uh, anatomical uh, patient condition and uh, uh, limb uh, protect, uh, limb. And these are my references.